Hi everyone, this is going to be my review on the USMLE World Question Bank. I started doing questions in February of 2011 and what I started doing was I started doing it subject wise. I started watching the Kaplan videos in January, the end of January, and I started with um, epidemiology. And so when I started doing questions, I started doing it subject wise. I do regret this. I don't recommend doing that. I think you should do random questions from the beginning. So I don't think you should do that, but that's what I did uh, for a couple of subjects. And then I just started doing um, a mix of questions. Uh, the reason I think you shouldn't do this is because my percentages were very low because, um, well, with behavioral science, it wasn't that bad. But once I got into bi biochem, it was really bad. I mean, try doing a block of biochem only questions. It's very difficult and my percentages were very low. So I don't think that that's what you should do. But I'm just gonna say how I did it. So I've gotten a couple of questions and comments on this video and so people are very interested with the uh, question bank. Uh, so Nilay01 asked about writing explanations and about the Kaplan uh, question bank. Let me start there. So first off I'm going to say that I think that one question bank is more than enough. I think that if you what you have to do is complete one question bank. USMLE World has every subject you need to cover in their question bank and I think if you jump around, then you're not going to get the experience of having just one question bank and knowing that one question bank really well. But I mean, if you have time and you have the money, you know, the more you can do, the better. I, I, I'm one that it just depends on you. So that's my first question that um, Nilay asked, Nilay01. And the other question was what I did with first aid. Now this video is going to link into a little bit uh, my first aid so but I'm going to explain more in detail when I go to first aid but basically when I started like I said I started by subject and what I would do was I was doing I started off doing one qu um, one block of questions a week so um, because when I would finish that block I would go over the block so let's say I would open. My first question was on cystic fibrosis. So I would open my first aid and I would write down every page where cystic fibrosis came up in the first aid, right? Let me show you my first aid. So I would come here to the back of the book. Here's my first aid. I used 2010. So I would come here to the index and I would go to let's say cystic fibrosis let me give, give you an example so cystic fibrosis comes up on page 87 521 and 528 so I would get a white sheet of paper and on that white sheet of paper I would write down those page numbers and then I would go one by one to those pages. Let's go to page 87 for example. Okay, so page 87, see my first date is all written. You should have writing. Okay, so that's what it says about um, cystic fibrosis and I would write whatever I thought was important for me. So I would go to each place in the first aid where this question came, um, I'm sorry, this subject came up, and I would write down uh, what I thought was important. So something that USMLE World and their objective and in their explanation had that was not in my first aid was that the mutation impairs post-transcriptional processing of the CFTR gene transcript. So I thought that was important and it helped me understand uh, cystic fibrosis so I would write it down. Or another example I have written here that the treatment, the N-acetylcysteine, provides the uh, sulfhydryl groups. 
So things like that. Um, whatever I thought was important or that the CFTR was an ATP channel or whatever, whatever you think is important. Uh, I went through every page that had cystic fibrosis on it. I would read it and then at the end, if there was, like I said, something I thought that was important that was not in any of the pages, then I would write it in the main page. Uh, or if it was on one of the other pages and it wasn't explained properly, then I would write in what helped me understand it. So that's what I think you should do with every question. I did that with every single question. Obviously there's questions that you're not going to have to write anything about because you understand the concept. So at the beginning, it took me very long to correct one block because I was getting a lot wrong. I started off, I think maybe 30 something, 40 percent, 40 something percent. And uh, towards the end of my preparation, I was getting 70 percent, 70 something, 72, 75 percent. And no, like 70 percent. Once I finished the Kaplan videos, then I focused on the USMLE World question bank. So, like I said, while I was doing Kaplan, I was doing about one block a week. And as I got faster and as I got more and more questions correct, then I would do more. And by the time I got to reading my first aid, which is what I did after Kaplan, I was doing, I would say, at least one uh, block a day. And there were days, depending on how well I did, because like I said, towards the end, I was getting 70%, a little over 70% correct. So I had very little questions to review. So depending on how well I did that day, I could do sometimes two blocks in one day. But it wasn't always uh, what I did because sometimes I wouldn't have, I would be able to do both blocks, but I wouldn't have time to review the second block. So that's what I did. And... I did that until I finished the question bank and I did the whole question bank over a second time 30%. When I did it over I was getting over 80% every time and it really helped to um, give me confidence for the day of the exam and it helped me see the uh, subjects that I really wasn't getting even the second time I wasn't getting it. So I think that if you can do it a second time, I would do it a second time. So that's what I did for every single question. Like I said, I would write it in my first aid. And then when I do my first aid video, I will explain why. So um, the first time I did uh, USMA World Question Bank, my average was 52%. Because like I said, when I started, I started doing subject-wise. And I did very, very bad. But the second time I did it, I was constantly, that 30% that I did over, I was constantly over 80%. And I remember that towards the end of my preparation, uh, like I said, it was always 7, 70% in, the, in that range, low 70s. Um, then I have, I had another question from Takeda Takoda, right? Takeda Takoda. And this is also... Uh, I think they're USIMG studying in Dominican Republic. I don't know if you're Dominican or if um, you're studying in, in Dominican Republic, but you asked um, what percent do you need to be getting correct to, to pass? Um, everybody asks these questions. Everybody asks these questions, and they say that it's somewhere close to 60%, but I personally, I don't know. Like I said, I passed towards the end. I was getting 70%, 70 in the low 70s, and I got a, a 213, so I don't know whatever you can get from that. I think it depends. I think it just depends, but I mean, you want to be getting anywhere over 50%, 60%, so. And your other question was, is USMLE world more difficult than the test? Uh, I'm going to do a video on my test day, but I will tell you that yes, USMLE world is much harder than the actual test. Uh, it's also, it's, it's easier than USMLE World uh, Question Bank and it's less tricky than the MBMEs. I'm going to do a video just for the MBMEs, so, uh, so that's the answer to your question. Now, what can I tell you about USMLE World that you guys need to know? Do not do it subject-wise. Do it random take a couple of weeks, maximum one month, 
to do it untimed just so that you get accustomed to the questions. Once you get accustomed to the questions and you've gotten the gist of how it works and the blocks and the whole nine, you should go to timed. Okay? Just like you should do random questions. Why? The day of the test, you are not going to be tested on only biochem. The day of the test, you're going to get a mix of everything. And when you mix things in, that helps you a lot. Okay? I, I, did all my behavioral science questions at the beginning. Behavioral science gives you free points, basically. I mean, there's questions that are very easy on the test, and those are points that are going to help you out a lot. So you should do it from the beginning random, and you should only take about a month to do untimed. Timing yourself is so important. If, if there was anything that I could say was the most important on the day of my test, and I'm going to do a video on test day, was time. Um... You need to get accustomed to being able to do this block quickly, getting used to reading the questions quickly, getting used to uh, understanding what they're asking you right away. And if you don't do time blocks, you'll never get into that habit. Uh, I could finish a block of questions, even a hard block, within 45 minutes, 50 minutes, on my test day. And... Uh, I'm going to go into this much later, but on my test day, at before my last block, before my seventh block, I had 40 minutes left of break time, and this helped me enormously because I was very tired, and I took 20 minutes before my last block. So get into doing questions timed, do them random, get into the pace of reading them, understanding what they're asking you right away. Don't read over a question a second time. If you did not get it in the first time, if you've done the USMLE World uh, Question Bank the way you should have, the first time you read the question, you should be good. And if you don't get it, you don't know it, guess. And that's basically it for this video. My next video is going to be on my first aid and then I'm going to do videos on the assessment. I used the USMLE World Question Bank for a six-month period. I got a six-month subscription, and that helped me so that I could renew it at the end and do it all over again. And also, I got the package that had the two assessments. So I'll talk about that in my assessments um, video. So I hope you guys enjoyed this, and... Until next time, bye.